did not achieve all those goals in accordingly uh, when we reach to the end of the time. Hope in, 2000, uh, in 2030, we will uh, achieve all these 17 goals in a better way and uh, hope we will find a, a better universe, better earth for all of us. Today, we have three important speakers, distinguished speakers from different countries. Uh, when I read their bios, I understand that they very active in sustainable development actions in their countries, not only in their countries, but also in the world. Uh, for example, Kalyani is an action woman for sustainable development goals. And Ranika focus on uh, networking and partnership in the world to achieve the sustainable development goals. And Patrick is a professor actually international relation professor, economic pro economic professor, but also uh, have very important experiences in international organizations to achieve the sustainable development goals. So today we will listen these three distinguished uh, speakers and to understand what can we do in our schools, in our countries, in our classes for sustain to achieve the, those goals. So if, uh, I, now want to give the first uh, right to speak to the Kalyani uh, to make her presentations to you. Uh, but uh, before that, let me explain the method of this session. Uh, first of all, we will give a 10 minutes uh, speak right to all three. Then the second turn, we will give another chance to finish their presentations. Then we will get your questions, if you want, uh, to the speakers, and we will make a bit uh, interactive discussion at the end of this session. Hope it would be end in 14.30 today, inshallah. Um, Kalyani, I will let you make your speech, but uh, before that, I will check the Ranika and Patrick is here or not. Ranika, I saw you, I think. You are here. Okay, thank you very much. You are very welcome. And I will check the Patrick, Dr. Professor uh, Patrick. Is it here or not? Not see yet, but uh, if you are here, Patrick, please let me know by writing in chat session or uh, maybe you can say uh, I am here. Okay, Kalyani, before your speech, can you introduce yourself in a short way? Because it's um, better uh, than my introducing you yourself. Okay, please. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all. Thank you, Dr. Ibrahim, for this uh, honorable uh, opportunity to take part in this international summit on sustainable development in education organized by Istanbul Aldin University and Bill College of Turkey. This is my first experience on Turkish uh, platform. Uh, before I uh, step into this actual information, I would like to uh, introduce myself. I'm a global edu environmentalist and UN reality climate reality corp 26 and i'm a software i'm an uh, i'm into education sector and as well as management sector i'm an ibdp cas coordinator previously and uh, stepped into sustainability development goals i do connect with uh, global organizations educational sectors as well as uh, a project i'm a, i'm expertise in project planning i create project and i implement it uh, with the help of the students and teachers this is a short profile of myself if you allow me, I'll go inside the, into the Please. speech. Or Thank you very much. Thank you. So my sincere gratitude for all the organizers and the moderator, Dr. Ibrahim, my fellow speakers, and my friend Celebi who introduced me to this platform. And this is my, of course, this is my first talk again I'm explaining. Before, I just want to start my session. I would like to give a small information about education is the most important, uh, most powerful weapon which you can use to change this world. A famous quote by a renowned great leader, Dr. Nelson Mandela. Education is a human right. We all know it with immense power to transform and never change things by fighting the existing reality. 
and education for sustainable development. Today's topic is a key to handle all the sustainable development issues into teaching and learning. For example, climate change, disaster risk re uh, reduction, biodiversity, poverty reduction, and sustainable consumption. According to UNESCO, education for sustainable development uh, Uh, sorry, Kalyani, we have a trouble with your voice. Okay. Okay, can I start again? Yes. No, just only the last sentence. Only okay. five seconds. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, education for sustainable development is a key to handle all the sustainable development issues into teaching and learning. For example, climate change, disaster risk uh, reduction, biodiversity, poverty reduction, and sustainable consumption. According to UNESCO Education, for sustainable development is a response to the urgent and dramatic challenges the planet faces. Mm -hmm. The collective activities of human beings have altered the Earth's ecosystem so that our very survival seems in danger because of changes more difficult to reverse every day. To contain global warming before it reaches catastrophic levels means addressing environmental, social, and economical issues in a holistic way. One of the best solutions is to bring awareness and change in education system by implementing sustainable development and aims at ensuring inclusive and inequitable, uh, inequitable uh, quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. The main objectives of sustainable development education is to empower everyone to make informed decisions in favor of environmental integrity, economic viability, and just a society for present and future generations. It aims to provide this knowledge that all the 21st century skills, attitudes, and value necessary to address sustainable development challenges. The sustainable development education has the primary goal of harnessing the power of education to advance environmental literacy and civic engagement that prepares students for jobs that contribute to a more equitable and sustainable future. It is a still evolving field. Here, the main lead role of teachers for, uh, in this uh, is a just a quite a complex and re on, re renounced. Teachers are considered to be the primary change makers to put into action uh, the sustainable development goals through creative and innovative activities by integrating lesson planning, involving students to lead a better sustainable lifestyle. For students, sustainability is a key to a better future. Ignoring sustainability can lead to the exhaustion of the natural resources. Through research, universities engage, can engage and encourage students to pursue interdisciplinary projects related to the SDGs and support new sustainable development solutions. Also, we need to recognize that major back end role here is our parents. It is so important to start educating their children about the environment at a young age. So as parents, they must discuss openly, honestly with their children about climate change to send the seed of the knowledge and emotional resilience into the young minds as they will need as they will need to ensure sustainability and environmental sustainability the main challenges also in sustainability are a little bit conflict between the nations sometimes implementation such as ensuring programs it's quite going to come related to governance such as political uh, will to transform development programs into sustainable long-term process pro practices. I just recent. I just want to share my uh, recent project on uh, UN SDG global uh, global SDGs, and I just want to uh, present in front of you uh, because the project is created in such a way, form of a competition for the age group of eight to twenty-four years to create interest, awareness, and enthusiasm on climate change and uh, eliminate carbon footprint. I would like to share those realistic implementation methodologies in front of you right now uh, in, the power, in the form of a PowerPoint presentation. Uh, may I allow it to start? Yes, you can. Thank you, Dr. Ibrahim. I think, hope you can see the uh, first screen of my PowerPoint presentation. Yes, it's now Is seen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is a project called, the name is called Suchana, a global UN SDG so real action project in 2022, initiated by me. And it's designed for the planet saviors, nothing but the students. And uh, we have been associated with International Corporation Office Department of Education, Philippines, 
in uh, and she is the director of uh, Philippines. And I always follow the climate is uh, the change is a real action, but not a prayer or meditation, according to Honorable Dr. Dalai Lama. So I always prefer the real action. And the project title name is derived from the ancient Sanskrit language. The first few letters we have taken from uh, uh, this Surya, Chandra, Nakshatra means sun, moon, and stars. That's the reason our logo also mix up the moon, star, and all. Uh, so it's going to stay forever. And uh, we follow uh, the policy, uh, uh, UNSDG 2050 policy that is leave no behind. And uh, we we have in, we have adopted the slogan there is no planet B. Of course, there is no planet B. That's why we want to eliminate the carbon footprint from our planet. And our main vision is to transform the young minds into researchers, recyclers, entrepreneurs, industrialists, scientists, and, the, and uh, overall the global thinker. They have to think in a global way. And uh, my, our mission is to bring all the 21st century skills to adapt into this project to create a new form, uh, form of a, uh, every young mind. And we, we believe the four pillars, sorry, we believe the four pillars are uh, the creative, interdisciplinary, uh, generating interdisciplinary curriculum, multi-age learning community, habits of mind, and also place-based learning, collaborative teaching and learning. We adopted 13 goals in this project, which is all interrelated. And uh, we have created a platform of the different topics, waste management, plastic, biodiversity, climate action, carbon footprint. And these are all being uh, uh, mixed up in this project to give up for particular, I mean, the perfect task to the students. And these are the categories we segregated with the, some catchy names, green beans, plastic warriors, blue barriers, climate crew. And uh, coming to this uh, uh, criteria, we have segregated into teams. Each category contains two teams and with two teachers. That means one team contains five students and one teacher. So this is going to come a collaborative learning along with the teachers and the management too. And then these are the insights. We have given a topics, I already explained you waste management related to category wise. And we have uh, given uh, the participation, uh, the, we have also have the participation from 40 countries, around 300 teams and 16 global associations we have been received. And we have five jury members from Kenya, Uganda, uh, Armenia, India, and Malaysia. And these are the timelines which we have followed. And we started the project from 12th September. We have done the orientation for educators. And then we have done preliminary round. But uh, virtual round, we have done face-to-face -face live presentations from all the students. And the judges were there to uh, uh, judge all the presentations. And we have done the grand finale with final uh, results on 20th November. And felicitation party, we have done we completed on 26th November very recently. And these are the project objectives. We have also uh, provided webinars on different uh, sustainable development goals from top professionals all over the globe. Uh, around 15 webinars were conducted for students. And week one, we have given for the creative poster and video making. Week two, we have given a plantation and cleanup drives. And uh, third and fourth week, we have given a prototype outputs. They have to bring the real action into the uh, prototype based concepts. And we have also given Told, we have informed them they have to adopt one collaboration during the project. They have to show the society how impact is that concept or the project. So they have to do that association. They have to present it during the presentation. And there are two rounds. Of course, I explained them in grand finale. And uh, coming to this, this is the plant and plant activity. They have uh, organized from all over the globe, uh, according to our students. And this is the uh, cleanup drive. They have done the cleanup from the schools, parks, and local, local areas, they, have, they went, I'll show the evidences also. And this is the takeaways, what we have given from our project. We conducted many uh, webinars, as I told you, and during that virtual tours in wildlife conservation, we also given some training programs on technology based, uh, like Google and Wakelet for the educators. And also we invited some researchers from uh, universities and uh, even from MUN, um, MBN conferences, we organize some uh, communication classes and uh, say all kind of, uh, you know, sustainability lifestyle right from the food health lifestyle, including the eye care problems because of the pandemic. So many students have this problem. So many things we organized in a series wise. And of course, these participations uh, certificates are there for special certificates for all the participants. And there's a free scholarship training program for all the top 10 uh, winners, uh, top teams of each category. 
and it has been uh, uh, associated. Uh, we have been uh, associated with our multimedia organization in Philippines. So they have given a free training programs on Minecraft and robotics for all the winners, and there's a special uh, assessment uh, certificates for, for them uh, who are all the winners and the teachers also uh, from a UK organization who has been uh, in assessment uh, sustainability organization. And uh, next, uh, coming to this, these are the outputs which we got from this project because uh, the institutions I told you participation and this much of uh, plants they planted during the program and uh, the waste uh, collected the plastic. This is the uh, area which we have uh, collected the total database and the cleanup drive they have conducted in all the 40 countries and we are proud that our children have done fantastic job and uh, these are the models which is my favorite uh, area where i we suggested the giant plastic whale for the young students and uh, the brick house they have to choose any one of this so there are some choose this some chosen this and uh, it's also a very big great uh, you know achievement for us that we have seen such a large whales and these are some of the outputs of the projects uh, some students have detected the application which can plant uh, diseases and some have done the robots uh, which has been collected from the which is going to collect the e-waste so it's all amazing job they've done some i already told a gigantic whale and echo heart somebody is uh, some schools have done uh, i mean brick, um, building the uh, uh, echo bricks house with plastic uh, line uh, bottles and the pipes and uh, other schools uh, some schools from malaysia they have uh, done eco friendly water dispenser with the waste materials and some students have done air conditioner for uh, to protect the environmental uh, projection and coming to this, this is our uh, one of the uh, youth ambassador from Uganda, and he is a young entrepreneur as well as a very uh, expertised immune speaker. And he was uh, influenced everywhere in Africa for our project. And uh, coming to the judges, these are the judges from all the five countries and different uh, areas. And and they're all educators, and uh, even uh, they're from uh, technology and university professors, etc. And uh, these are the our multimedia partner who has given us the scholarship training program because this is going to be an internship training program also for the students. They can present it uh, in their migration uh, visas or any any uh, applications for the universities or further studies. Even in the career uh, for the uh, for in the profile, they can add our certificate because our certificate is valid and uh, it has been certified by the UK organization. And this is the core team working with me along with me in different countries. We are all working from different countries, but with the mutual timings, they're all the, they're all the time, three months they're with me. And uh, these are the, and this is my collaboration uh, association partners from the globe. And we have also uh, registered in the, uh, week to act SDGs and this is all about me in a short form uh, and coming to this yes I'm specialized in sustainable assessments for the organizations and education institutions and uh, yes of course this is the end of my slide great ideas can change the world I believe in that and I finally I say I always say give more greens to protect the blues I repeat give more greens to protect the blues i love this word so i always say as i believe in this just follow it thank you so much thank you um, <laughs> Kalyani, there is a sound problem okay Kalyani, thank you very much uh it's a wonderful project actually um it's not only uh a very detailed project, but it's also connect all the countries with each other and uh, work together and make something different, something for their own countries together. So it's a very exciting project for me. Uh, le let me uh, summarize your speech in Turkish a bit, then I will let Ranika to make uh, her speech uh, just after uh, one or two minutes translation of Kalyani's words. Uh, Kalyani, uh, çevre ve e, sürdürülebilir kalkınma hedefleri doğrultusunda çalışmalar yapmak üzere e, bir aktivist olarak hayatını organize etmiş. Siz de onun hem anlatış tarzından hem de e, sunumdaki içeriklerden bu detayları görmüşsünüzdür. Özellikle eğitimin e, bu konuda en önemli araç olduğunu e, farkındalığı artırmanın e, insanları güçlendirmenin, yaratıcı ve yenilikçi geri işler bulmanın, disiplinler arası çalışmanın, aileleri bu işin içine katmanın, projeler gerçekleştirmenin ve dua etmek yerine 
aksiyona geçmek gerektiğini belirten bir anlayışla bu hareketleri yürütüyor. Dünyanın dört bir tarafından e, dostları, arkadaşları, akademisyen e, ve çevreci ve aktivist e, ilişkileri var. Ve bunlarla yürüttüğü e, Suçan adlı projesiyle e, 40, 40'a yakın ülkede faaliyetler gerçekleştiriyor. Öğrencilerle envai çeşit yaratıcı fikirler e, 20-25 slaytlık detayı e, tamamını anlatamayacağım size. Ama umarım bu slaydı belki e, korumlarımız bize bir özetini ya da bir Türkçe bu projeyle alakalı bir kitapçı bizim için e, ulaştırırlarsa bu katılımcılara. E, çok fikir açıcı, bizim de e, zihnimizi açıcı bir e, proje olduğunu söyleyebilirim. Onun için e, ben tekrar sizin uzunluğunda Türkçe olarak da Diyor ki yeşili artırırsanız maviyi koruyabilirsiniz diye bir sloganla bitirdi. İki kere söyledi onu. Yani yeşili korumalıyız. Bitki, işte plastik vesaire. Yani çevreyle alakalı bütün meseleler üzerine odaklanan çok güçlü bir projeydi. Çok etkileyici. Gerçekten proje yürütmek bir problem. Fakat proje fikri, yaratıcı proje fikri derinlemesine ve bu projeyi uluslararası ağlarda Romanya'dan Filipinlere, Malezya'dan Uganda'ya kadar insanlarla yürütmek daha başka bir başarı. Onun için ben Kalyani'ye huzurunuzda tekrar teşekkür ediyorum. Kalyani, I have explained how deep project is it in Turkish to audience and I thanked in Turkish on behalf of them to you and thank you again. Okay, Ranika, uh, you are focusing on the partnership and networking. For to achieve sustainable development goals. Actually, it's very important because the earth is actually politically separated with the borders, but uh, naturally it is not. So we have to be together to protect our world. So uh, please uh, start with your short introduction, then uh, let's uh, see what you will present for us today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Ibrahim. And congratulations, Kalyani, for your wonderful project and sharing with us. I'm very pleased to hear all these things. It is very important. And also, uh, thank you for setting up the stage of why we need education, like why we need a sustainable development uh, embedded into the education system and how you have done this wonderful job of bringing this to the world. So thank you very much. And uh, uh, it gives me a real pleasure to follow up with my uh, presentation. So I'm very, very honored to be here today with you all. I am Dr. Renuka Thakur, founder of Global Sustainable Futures Progress to Partnership Network. And I provide a leadership to this global network. I carry out all administrative and multidisciplinary activities here. And as a part of a recognition, I have received Leaders for Development Governance Enquiry Thomas Cresto Award from the uh, Parliament of uh, Argentina. Uh, last uh, August, I received this award. I was also awarded as a Global SDG Woman Ambassador Award in uh, 2022. Uh, so I am very much interested in connecting academics, businesses, individuals, and especially bringing them from the global south and global north to get involved into climate adaptation and resilience and just transition. Again, very much in, in tune with uh, Kalyani, what she said, My, uh, I'm committed to leaving no one behind and contributing to sustainable development goals. And I want to dig into real world problems to solve them by applying systems thinking, transdisciplinarity, bringing together technologies, emerging trends in skills, education, employment, and future scenarios. And that's why today I will bring this presentation to you, uh, especially from uh, what are our priorities for the businesses and communities. And so, I'm not looking directly into the education, but these are the things which we need to consider when we are trying to develop education with sustainable development. So again, thank you very much for having me here and uh, uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone who has joined uh, today here. 
I will try to share my screen now. I hope you can see my screen. Okay, uh, perfect. <clears throat> So uh, this is a, a global sustainable future uh, a video, but I'm not going through the video. I have put the link, sorry, and I will leave it for you to uh, look at the video later on. And the video says that I have 800 coordinators uh, and of course that was very old, but the vision and the objectives remains the same, but currently we have two, 2,200 coordinators in 142 countries. So I'm very proud of my network and I'm especially proud of those who have joined with me because they are giving me voluntary time to make this success. And uh, of course, uh, that also allows me to focus on networking and uh, partnerships uh, area, which I'm very much, uh, you know, passionate about. So uh, let me get just back reflect back on my one of the priorities of sustainable development goals, uh, where I did a short research uh, with a, a multidisciplinary uh, researchers and uh, like minded people to understand what should be our priorities or how what should we have in our future managers of our society to uh, address uh, and uh, how they can address these problems. And we wanted to understand what were the real problems. And we found with this first brainstorming session that there were critical environmental impact problems like torrential rains, hailstone, torrentos, and all that. And then we also had very uh, persistent uh, social issues like poverty, inequality, climate change, and so on. And with knowledge, particularly, we had uh, lack of knowledge in renewable energy, control and distribution of the knowledge and the population and resource availability and so on. And there are the problems like materialism and consumerism and health and well-being. So these all uh, problems, uh, we thought that we can address only if we develop our capacity in systems thinking, because they are associated with each other in our societal system, and one cannot be solved on its own. And therefore, we need to have a focus on broader global uh, problems, as well as looking into the local capacities, how to address them. And especially like unsustainable growth of urbanization, resource deficiency, decentral uh, desertification, and these are very, very challenging problems. So the objective of this workshop was to understand our priorities. And we thought that we should be doing like addressing poverty. But in poverty, what I mean is uh, let us take poverty in the broadest sense, such as economic poverty, energy poverty, literacy poverty, uh, poverty of having uh, resources, uh, poverty of having the opportunities for an employment, uh, employment, and so on. So uh, these are the things which we need to uh, focus on. Further, it was also identified that we need to have sustainable homes because everything starts with the home. Every person, if they are in a sustainable home, they would have that practice and would apply it going forward anywhere in their activities. And therefore we need to have that. We need to have sustainable communities. We need to have resilient cities and infrastructure. And these all are also at like, we must transform. This is all possible only if we transform the behavior and decision-making of our local level as well as global level power, uh, actors. And everything, should be at the center of our decision making. We are the voters of our future. We are the people who can frame this, our future. And therefore we should be taking decision making as our ownership and decide on better 
betterment or shaping our future. And so all the central role lies in us. So now as the world is changing, we, have, we are encountering several adversities and each individual and businesses are encountering these adversities and the systems in which we are operating are already very confusing and emerging things become more disconnected. And therefore we need to have a very much remarkable uh, knowledge of capitalism, but where the capitalism which can allow us the resource allocation system where we try to not replace the one, but also to substitute it with the social capitalism and environmental capitalism. And therefore we need to have that, uh, for example, the understanding of like, when we are doing any activity, who is paying the cost of say pollution? Who is the paying the cost of waste? And these all things need to be considered when we are talking about businesses or our activities. And therefore resource allocation is very important and the total cost of various things that we want to accomplish. So what is the role of the businesses? What is the role of uh, uh, you know, building resilience? These all things we need to adopt in our thinking. And the process should be very crucial in terms of immediate aspects of that should be into uh, turning into the production of money and credit. And the money and credit should be implementing into uh, like implications, should have implication from or, or on entrepreneurship and innovation and technology that we need to create to build all these things. So education should have this, uh, uh, uh, not only one education type, but a whole range of support system needs to be created through education. Next, I would like to focus on investment and where to invest. Of course, we know now from many practical examples that we need to invest in renewable energy. And therefore, the knowledge, the skills, the expertise needed for the renewable energy needs to be amplified all over the education system or in the businesses, business practices or in the communities everywhere. We must take the talk of this climate change and renewable energy on our table, a dinner table, like every time our talk should be centered to this, how we can contribute to the growth of renewable energy and become net zero as fast as we can. And this challenge must be addressed or taken the ownership by everyone who is involved in the society. It could be from the childhood, from young people, from uh, anyone in the in the society. And, and we must work together in globally, like understanding what's going on in global, but also focusing on local, where this local and global, I cannot emphasize more. It is very much important to have the global understanding while focusing on local capacity. And also, uh, especially like academic institution, governments, civil society, everyone should come together to help uh, flourish this renewable energy sector. Second is we must be looking at in the terms of COVID recovery. You know, we want, we have identified the digital transformation capacity in this COVID uh, time, and that should not be undermined. Digital technology is going to give you a lot of opportunities, but Again, we have to remember that we don't want to replace it or, or use it as an automation to replace the human power that would increase our job loss and unemployment. That is the biggest challenge again in the digital transformation. But we have to be exploiting this digital technology for our own benefit and not for the digital transformation benefit, okay? And therefore the technology can allow us this innovation to go speedy. We must, because the time is less, because of the urgency, we must have this technology 
adopted in a way that can allow us to move forward. And that education can play a very, very big role in this. And the third point I want to make is that we must invest in humanity. Here, I wanted to show you and like share an example of Sendender. Sendender has 150 million customers of which 4 millions are SMEs. Sendenter is taking care of their people. They are having 100,000 people uh, talking to the customers like every day, and they deliver this number and connect with the stakeholders in a right way. And therefore, everyone has gone on a digital payment system that has definitely impacted us on plenty of uh, different areas, of course, on the net zero, like lowering our carbon emissions through the paper use, but also in increasing our, uh, you know, transparency and uh, taking out the black money out of the market. I don't know, I'm, I'm not that expert in finance, I'm, I may be wrong, but I, I feel that this is a good way to move forward. But this is just an example of how we can reach out to small and big and everyone in the world. Of course, I know that uh, many people are not having internet and when they are having internet, they do not have electricity or they do not have the power. And sometimes it also happens that do, they do not have the hard hard instrument uh, or, or hardcore instrument to support that soft system. But this all needs to be worked out. That all needs to be innovated within the local capacity so that we can support each other. And the SMEs, I believe SMEs, because 99.6% of businesses in UK are SMEs and 90% of businesses in the world are also SMEs. So SMEs can play a big role here in considering uh, humanity because they are the supply chain of large organization. They can support the large organization and they can uh, support themselves. And here the woman power, uh, bringing women in leadership is so much important. Bringing young people as an innovator in this leadership is so important that I cannot emphasize more. It is very important cause, and we should bring all the uh, sections and societies of the world to a same state uh, platform. Uh, do I have time, or shall I stop here? Um, uh, what's your plan? One or two minutes? You can finish the first part. All right. I will just uh, uh, this finish with this one, and then I can go further later okay. on. Uh, mm -hmm. And and the. And the big companies, like, you know, they are pretty good operations and therefore we must support them. They have been do leading the industries from long, so they have plenty of capacities. So we must take advantage of those knowledge base and the practices, but unlearn the bad things which we have already done for our society or for our uh, environment. Uh, but use their capacity to move our uh, trajectories towards net zero and uh, a better world. So I, th I think I will stop here uh, uh, because then I have a few more slides, like five slides to go, but I think I can stop here for a while. Thank okay. you very much for me. Uh, okay. Uh, let's uh, keep a bit uh, interesting and uh, motivating part from your presentation for the second part. Uh, thank you, Renika. Uh, it's a great and insightful uh, presentation for me, actually. And I uh, wonder the other part, uh, indeed. Uh, but before I summarize what you said in Turkish, let me ask, do we have Professor Patrick here now? or not because I did not see his name yet among participants. Dr. Patrick, do you hear me or you are, you are here? I think no, okay. I did not get any email as well. Uh, so I'm checking sometimes. Arkadaşlar, Renika gerçekten 
böyle çok derinlemesine bir e, bakış açısı sundu bize. Bunu özetlemek zor ama şöyle söyleyebilirim. Eğitimi Sustainable Development Goals yani sürdürülebilir kalkınma hedefleri doğrultusunda yeniden okumak, yeniden kurgulamak gerektiğine dair bir giriş yaptı. Bu çerçevede e, tabii kendisi çok ödüllü, çok bu konulara e, kafa yormuş ve çok güçlü bir aktivist ve dolayısıyla çok ödüller almış ve global e, network bu sürdürülebilir kalkınma hedefleri için bir ağ kurmuş kendisi. Bu ağın içerisinde 2200 tane koordinatör, 142 ülke var. Gerçekten bu rakamların tek başına yönetilmesi bile büyük bir başarı. O yüzden kendisi tebrik ediyoruz. Sorunları çevre sürdürülebilirlik, e, kapasiteyi güçlendirme ve e, diğer genel problemler olarak ayırdı. Fakat bize özellikle bu e, konuda en önemli meselenin davranışlarımızı değiştirmek olduğunu söylüyor. Bir kere bu anahtar kavramı en başta söyleyeyim. İkincisi de üç tane önemli hususa vurgu yaptı. Birisi neye yatırım yapacağız biz? Elimizdeki parayı nereye harcarsak e, dünyayı sürdürülebilir hale getirebiliriz. Buradaki ilk cevabı enerjiydi, sürdürülebilir enerjiydi. İkincisi dijital dönüşüme ve smart yani akıllı teknolojiyle dünyayı sürdürülebilir hale deva, mümkün kılabiliriz. Dolayısıyla akıllı şehirler, akıllı ürünler, akıllı e, hizmetler vesaire bir sunum yaptı. Ve son olarak insanlık meselesine vurgu yaptı ve bununla ilgili çok güçlü bir detay sundu bize. Ve çevre, toplum ve hükümetin birbiriyle nasıl bir ağ içerisinde olduğuna dair bir ilişkilendirme yaptı. Şimdi bazen e, kendi adıma söyleyeyim bir akademisyen olarak bu detayları bu kadar derinlemesine konuşmak acaba çevreyi korumak için çok fazla laf mı üretiyoruz anlamına gelebilir. Ama mesele o kadar derin bir mesele ki bunun gerçek felsefesi gerçekten ne tür ilişkileri olduğunu çözümlemediğimizde o zaman yaptığımız eylemler basit okul etkinliklerine dönüşüyor. Gerçi okul etkinliklerini basit saymayalım çocuklar için çalışıyoruz fakat e, derinlemesini anlamak gerekiyor. Okay, thank you, uh, Ranika. I try to summarize what you said in a few words, but uh, I'm very impressed about your presentation uh, because we don't have yet the Dr. Patrick, so we can go on with Kalyani again with the, for the second turn. And then, actually, we have only 14 minutes for the 14.30, but we can... Uh, make a bit longer for a 15 minutes, for example, not but not so much because it's a limited time. But before uh, I let you make your presentation, let me remind my audiences to prepare their questions. Uh, they can either write on chat session or they can have a right to make in voice, but I think it would be better to take their question in uh, session uh, chat session part. Uh, arkadaşlar sorularınızı sohbet bölümüne yazabilirsiniz. Ben de ikinci tur sunumlar bitince onlara yönelteceğim. Peki, thank you very much again and uh, Kalyan it's your turn. Uh, thank you so much because this is an unexpected uh, offer again. So I would just want to share one more presentation in a short form. I think how many minutes I have right now? Uh, five minutes. Let's say seven. seven. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I would like to eliminate the carbon footprint. I always feel that carbon footprint is playing a major role right now, even for the future. We want to eliminate permanently. So I just want to bring few realistic uh, actions because I believe in real action, as I told you. I would like to bring some information about the students, which I want to alternate, which I want to replaced in the present life, like greenery, greener alternatives. Suppose uh, we have a lot of libraries where we're going to spend a lot of books, keep it and, you know, we, we used to purchase a lot of books because we are using the paper. So to avoid paper, we can start replacing with e-libraries and the transportation will be less. We can, we can reduce the fuel, you know, gas emissions, all these kind of, you know, expenses, and we can reduce the paper usage. The reason is we can plant more trees because trees absorb 0.16 tons of carbon dioxide every uh, for, for year for any year. So one tree that much it is absorbing. Just imagine. So I want to replace all the libraries with e libraries. Even at least upcoming schools, upcoming institutions, they can start. Even the corporates they can start this. <clears throat> Coming to the eco friendly programs because I am very much passionate. Uh, beach cleaner program person and pro programmer and also 
ocean conferences. My life started with that, actually. That transformation in my life from the management to the education field started with the beach cleanup transformation. And one fine day I was thinking about in the seashore because I stay near the seashore. I love oceans. And this is one of the activity which I used to spread in my city. Now my beach is totally, my city beach is so clean and tidy. I don't get the trash to clean the beach. Whenever I want to do the beach cleanup, I used to go and ask uh, the local government, please stop cleaning for two, three days. I want to bring the trash with my students or maybe with the parents. Initially, I used to have a lot of opposition from parents. Of course, then later on, I given orientation. And the later part, people started joining from other schools also. So we have conducted many programs on this, debates, conferences, even writing journals on this. We used to give uh, white papers for students, even at young age, they used to come with ideas. Those ideas, I used to pick up the best and I used to submit my local government. The local government implemented those ideas because we had a severe a, a tsunami in the year of 2012, October. So from that onwards, total entire city has been, you know, the greener part has been gone and the beach has totally into disaster with a lot of soil erosion and all. So when these projects are started, we are sharing with the local government. We started implementing, but the name was not, my name is not there, it's okay. But whatever the ideas we have projected, we have shared with them, it was there today. And I always say as a, the farmer is the first citizen of the country, anywhere in the corner of the world, because I respect farmers. I came from farming, uh, farmer uh, family, and I also know the value of a farmer. He is not a literate. He has not any PhD. He has not any doctorate, but he knows when to plant, where to plant, and what kind of soil, what kind of plant seed it is, and how it is going to give the fruitfulness, and how it is going to, what, what whether it is suitable. Everything he knows, I don't know the reason because he connected very deeply to the mother earth, the soil connects them. So I always take the students, even the uh, younger students or uh, elder students to the farming trips. It was in long back, now student, now the institutions corporate started farming, but I started long back around seven years before, eight years before. So I used to, we used to take children, they also did dress up in the farming, farmers uh, dress, and they go and interview the farmers, they take surveys, they take videos, they make farmers to talk. They enjoy the, uh, the, the, the friendship, the, uh, the intimacy with the farmer because they are very knowledgeable people. Once we started this, we understood how, the, how we can give a doctorate for each farmer, I think so. The coming to <laughs> encouraging the factory fields. Why I encourage factory fields? Because students will have a vast and wide knowledge when they visit the factories. The reason is they can see the reality, how much the factories are producing, but how much waste is coming, but how many factories are uh, holding the filters because those filters directly without filterization, those uh, elevated waste, it's coming directly into the oceans because I live near the oceans. I can watch from where it is coming and where are the sewages. It is directly connected to the ocean. Ocean is not a dustbin because always people think ocean is a dustbin. No, it is a resourceful one for this world to live. If oceans are existed, we cannot. This is the main. So that's the reason I told in my previous speech, uh, I give more greens, protect the blues. Because blues are good, we can live better. Now you can see the Antarctica Alps are melted. The reason is it takes 100 to 300 years old to get one snow mountain. But snow mountains are melting. And I don't know what exactly is going to happen in the near future. So the future is based upon the youngsters. So I always make them to go and see the reality. I'll take them to the sand erosion and some areas which with a lot of protection and all, we take them and show them the reality. This is the reality, you have to work it on this. This gives a lot of impact on the mind of the youngsters. <clears throat> and the field visits also helps me like solar plants, recycling products and food wastage because where hotels are going to waste a lot of food, these students will learn from the, big, from the young age not to waste food. Food is very important. Water is important. And this is a living, the lifestyle, the clothing is important. And of course, solar plants will generate the power electricity. They, I will also give, a, uh, give them a survey of how much electricity in a day, in a month, the school and your classroom or in your at home or maybe in your office, how much you are going to consume, how much you are going to save it. So this is a survey. Children enjoy this normally. 
we keep uh, we keep a clubs for them uh, energetic clubs and the solar clubs like that we used to uh, bring the water clubs also there people used to detect how many people are wasting water in a organization or maybe in the institutions so this this, this gives them a lot of fun but they learn a lot and of course connectivity they connect with, they connect and they collaborate online with many other continental uh, schools and organizations and they exchange the views and ideas of different various geographical uh, issues based upon the climate reality actions and that gives them a lot of knowledge and they, it, it also helps them to create their own presentations portfolio and upcoming academic uh, uh, classes yeah this is what i i told you observe the waste stage when they go for network connections they discuss on these things sometimes i also tell them go to the malls go to the streets do a skit do a flash mob on the awareness of uh, cl climate action or whatever the poverty women uh, you know a woman empowerment etc they create a skit and they do present it in front of the public during early morning or maybe uh, the, the you know the busy times of the malls in the weekend times so there are students who are interested to create uh, spread the awareness within the public because public is always busy in their own work of course students are the major role people will attract through this kind of activities they go even to the government offices they play the skit there they explain them how paper is wasting try to uh, save the e-waste you know, how to collect the e-waste so these are the things that we have given uh, ideas for the students and students used to go right from the colleges to schools and even universities and coming to the uh, composing the trash cans yes that is very important every house everywhere even an office we have a compost cans because we have to segregate it this is also causing a lot of uh problem to the causing the earth the soil you know these are the areas we have given some orientations also for students and to the housewives some people does uh, the house uh, some some other uh areas where they do not have the idea what is a compost so the children will go to house to house they make a survey they give them an idea to the uh, the um, I mean the housewives who stay there uh, uh, at their places, they give the forms. They'll give us some kind of uh, uh, the tablet PC. They'll show the, all the pictures. They'll explain to the normal uh, public. So this is also kind of awareness creating. And even uh, <clears throat> they do a lot of uh, presentations when they go to tribal areas and villages. They go one day visit and they give uh, PowerPoint presentations to the villages how to uh, uh, how to segregate this kind of compost waste and how to take care of the sanitation cleanliness etc and uh, coming to the own uh, uh, institutions always engage them to keep their environmental clean i mean the, even the campus wherever they are they can host the exhibitions they can host recycle uh, uh, you know kind of competitions in the school itself or colleges and also they can go to the kitchen of this institution, the college uh, uh, kitchen or wherever it is. They can collect the wastage and they can also dump to the, uh, I mean, connect with the local NGOs who collect the waste, e-waste and the food waste. And that is also gives an amount of income for the students that with that amount, they will purchase the stationaries required for the normal local students where they don't uh, they don't afford for the stationary part so this kind of exchanging knowledge as well as exchanging services will make them a global thinkers global entrepreneurs global leaders so uh, my all my projection is always to bring them as a leader and uh, uh, they have to be i told you be wise why because this, they have saved energy they, have, they should know how to cut short the internet, how to cut short the lights and fans and refrigerators and air conditioning, how to uh, make them uh, less billing. So they will teach their parents. This is also one uh, area we used to train students. They go and talk to their own parents and the grandparents. They explain about this and those parents will spread in during their meetings or parties or kitty parties they'll explain about the mothers are going to do that so this is the way we are generating spreading the information in depth into the public minds and coming to the global exchange collaborations which i already told educators are exchanging the uh, global classrooms through that students are also exchanging their rules they're going to write the blogs they're going to write uh, a kind of uh, you know reflections on each other's presentations that's a good uh, uh, idea where we can uh, molding all the 21st century skills here and uh, yes plan uh, same similarly the same thing which i explained here it will create a 
large portfolio for the entire uh, school journey or college journey with the come up to the class or school. This is going to be a permanent uh, portfolio for every student. And also this is going, this is also comes under student exchange programs because I am a trained uh, student exchange, international student exchange program uh, from um, uh, AFS India, that is uh, American Field Services, is one of the in international NGO in the world. So uh, I, I used to handle a lot of uh, uh, international students to my place. Uh, they come for nine months, they study here, they leave back. So similarly, I send MAO students to our country, their schools, and they used to exchange. So these are the very, it's a very challenging job, uh, but still we used to do this. So these are the ways we can bring the real action into the students, of course. So I also distribute the curriculum uh, designing books uh, through one of my organization where I was being an executive board advisor. So we give a free teacher training programs for students and also we supply the uh, uh, lesson planning books on SDGs where student teachers will be guided first and then they will going to share with the students. Uh, I think the time is, uh, I'm, I'm on the time. Thank you so much, Dr. Yeah. Brim. Okay, Karyani, you mentioned about a video. Don't you show us? Yes, I want to show. If you give me time, I'll do that. Please, please, let us see. Uh, it's important because it's, it's very, a very small video. Uh, yes, yes, yes. To yes. see what kind of yes, yes, uh, yes. actions on this, uh, to display uh, in real uh, behaviors and actions in the world. Kalyani bu konuşmasında özellikle okullarda yapmamız gereken 19-10 tane madde saydı. Çok pratik maddeler saydı. E, Kalyani'nin videosu açılırken bunları söylemiş olayım. E, video geldi şimdi. Sonrasında özetleyeceğim tekrar. Okey. <gülüyor> The project which focuses the participants to transform into researchers, researchers, and global thinkers. We, the participants of Sushna, will take initiative, analyze, and adopt SDGs life, which aims to achieve zero consumption of single-use plastic bottles. We, the students of Ali Juniors, have taken part in collecting single-use plastic bottles challenge called Party Up Challenge which helped us to collect maximum plastic bottles for our Suchna project. Hi everyone, I'm Lili. We have faced many obstacles and challenges in our path. We have overcome them with teamwork and effort. For example, at this time, we had very, very low amount of bottles. But soon, we had to work, we motivated the students, and we had over 800 bottles a day. We had troubles with the design of the wheel, but we based on that idea, amazing result. After tallying the total of the balls to over 5,000 balls, which is a great feat, we have to organize the balls to uh, include it in our will. So we have grouped the balls uh, on, uh, yeah. So one group, we would take the balls, they would remove the caps, and what we, what the other group would do, we would take those balls again, put screws on them, and then we would attach it on the balls and make a series of balls. So as you can see here, each series has 10 balls. And this is six series, it's equal to 60 balls. And it was a lot of effort, but we gotta put even more. So we continue doing it. And as you can see, this is our mentor helping us uh, doing our project, lifting the things to identify. So here is guiding us on how to uh, shape the thing. So the main frame of the whale is being designed and it's being explained by our mentor. How the front part, how the smile, so as you can see here, we're fixing the wires of the area because wiring is really important because, you know, you can uh, put balls on empty air. So these wires will help the balls stay in position. So as you can see, we're all fixing the wires. So this is how we achieve in progress. So we took those series of lines and we put it on those wires. So you can see how wide all these wires are. So uh, our mentor is showing us what to do here in each clip. So slowly and surely we're reaching their progress. So we finished the rods. We're trying to build the interior right now. We're building the final exterior parts. We're about 70% of the project is done. So right here we're putting the balls, we're taking those long uh, extra uh, lines. We're connecting it to a metal wire and we're
were wrapping it around the main frame. Thank you, Kalyani. Uh, it's interesting activity with students. Which country is it? It is from uh, Sharjah. It's from Sharjah Al Ain Junior College. Uh, these are the primary students. Actually, we have several categories, but I cannot show all the videos. This is the one of the uh, number one ranked uh, a video of the students on the plastic waste collection. And the idea was provided by me, the plastic whale, because I love oceans. I told them to create a whale, uh, jega, giant whale. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Bu fikir benim de diyor bir ilkokul öğrenci grubuyla yaptık bunu ve e, plastik balina etkinliği okyanuslara çok düşkün olduğum için. Kalyani özetle kütüphaneleri deki kitapları kaldırıp e library library yapabiliriz. Çevde dostu programlar yapabiliriz. Çocukları denizlere inisiyatif almaya götürebiliriz. Özellikle doğal tarımla uğraşan insanlarla tanıştırabiliriz. Onların doğayla nasıl barışık yaşadıklarını doktorları olmadan onların fark etmelerini sağlayabiliriz. Fabrikaların nasıl kirletici unsurlar olduğunu ya da atıkların nasıl çoğaldığını görmeleri için ziyaretler yapabiliriz. Birbirleriyle ilişki kurarak bu konuları konuşmalarını, tartışmalarını sağlayabiliriz. Mutlaka kompas yani bu atıklardan gübre yapma etkinliklerine ilişkin mutlaka her okulda bu tip olanaklar öğrenciler için sunabiliriz. Daha az tüketmek, enerji tüketmek şey yapmak, tasarruflu kullanmak ve elbette e, uluslararası bir networking yani bütün dünyayla bu konuları konuşacakları bir yapı kurmak ve tabii bütün okulların bir portfolyosunun olması okullarda kal- sürdürülebilir, kalkınma hedeflerini gerçekleştirmek için pratik öneriler olabilir. Gerçekten pratik önerileri çok seviyorum. Dolayısıyla Kalyani'ye tekrar sizin adınıza teşekkür ediyorum. Kalyani, this practical uh, suggestions are very important for the teachers. So I summarized the titles of me, but they will check what you have done in uh, action in the schools. Okay, okay, Ranika, thank you very much again for waiting for us. And uh, your last right to finish your presentation, then we will uh, uh, see the questions. Thank you very much once again, and I will share my screen. Mm So another point I wanted to make is about equality of opportunity. And I understand, like I have heard from many businesses saying that they have much trouble hiring women due to their business be, uh, being male dominated or such. Be, uh, and so they do not know what to do. And so I wanted to share an example, which was actually carried out by Blackstone, a leading global investment business. And they had no uh, woman participant in their, like a woman employee uh, in their organization. And they were found, they found that women were very scared of them and did not apply also at all when there were uh, some uh, advertise going on for the employment. So Blackstone took the help of universities and created an internship at the firm. And women found that they were doing very interesting job and found that they were surrounded by friendly people. And so the soon there was a change in culture in the business and the, that created a vision for uh, the businesses and also to the woman employee. And gradually they started recruiting and just in not, uh, only in two years time, they have now 50% of women in their workplace. So it, nothing is impossible if you try to make small steps and turn into culture. The second point I want to make about green world. 
sustainable procurement is such an important thing. And here again, my point relates with the SMEs, that SMEs have to play a very big role and we must identify what are the blockage for that. We must go out. Those who know the solutions must take the leadership, must go out and address it and solve it and create a support system for making the world green and allow businesses to buy sustainable types of things where everyone, individuals and businesses all can adopt a sustainable practices, make intelligent decisions and impact on this big issue on a larger scale. And finally, the two dominant uh, themes worldwide are especially in the current of adversity, which I would like to highlight, which are one of course, climate change and COVID-19. And as Kalyani has already identified that kids and young people are the best ambassadors of today to shape their future. And I would again reiterate that point that we have 300 million people who are already between 15 and 25 who are concerned about the climate change and especially they reside in Africa. And so hundreds of millions of young people worldwide can get together, whether small businesses or small or big or local or however they want to uh, get engaged. We all must focus on providing them skills and expertise, education, technology, and the impact of the fourth industrial revolution and how this technology can bring up the bright futures that should be emphasized to each and every young people. We must bring them, motivate them into this area for them to create an exciting and bright future for themselves. And also we must stop the demographic time bomb at the, at the same time. Uh, we must be optimistic and uh, make this engine, give them fuel for the bright uh, future. And the pri I, I cannot, uh, you know, underestimate the power of private and public or partnership. As already Kalyani mentioned that she went to the government and asked them for three days of uh, trash cleaning. So that is what we want. We want to engage with uh, people who are real influencer and we must make that try to develop a partnership between government and private sector or public sector. And then I would also emphasize that the private sector has a unique role to play in global and globally competitive investment environment, and especially from the African continent at the moment, that where everyone's uh, focus is lying there for driving economic participation and growth and broadly supporting small businesses to grow uh, for the renewable energy, innovation, and many other things around there. So I think uh, we must be uh, focusing on what are the needs of the community, bring them uh, together with uh, partners uh, in, in a private and uh, public sector. And also uh, we must uh, provide them capacity development uh, <clears throat> support so that the uh, organizations or anyone who can, they can create a people capital and also technological capital that can drive our innovation, change and economic growth and have a great platform for all economics. I, uh, I uh, immensely believe in sharing economy and circular economy. Sharing economy is a platform where we can use the idle resources which are lying out there idly. They are staying there idly. We must make use of these idle resources because we have already embedded the carbon emission, uh, like uh, already there is in carbon emissions embedded in these assets, in these resources. And we must make use of these idle resources 
and we can create a sharing economy. The best examples is like Airbnb, Uber, and many others where that, which are emerging uh, uh, uh, businesses who have taken like uh, a good flight in uh, just in very few years. And therefore, I think we must focus on this growth of sharing economy and circular economy. Circular economy is very important because we are going to eliminate waste of all types, waste of resources, waste of skill, waste of uh, real waste, material waste, and many other ways. So we must be uh, focusing on circular economy. And here in both the things, partnership and networking plays an eminent role to make this possible, to get your, uh, uh, get you to the appropriate and relevant partners. And that's why I always stop by saying that no matter we can fly together to get, uh, achieve our bright future. Thank you very much. I'm connected to plenty of platforms, social media, LinkedIn and all that. So please connect with me to connect to others in my network. Thank you. Thank you, Renika. Uh, as uh, was the first part, the second part was also so impressive. Uh, the sharing and circular economy is a very good idea. And also your last uh, graphic, innovation for government in government and with government for the people is very uh, insightful uh, idea for me. Thank you very much. Uh, let me a short brief to my Turkish audiences. Then I will ask you one question for each of you then we will finish. Eee Ranika son bölümde arkadaşlar eşitlik, yeşili koruma ve genç insanlara yatırım kavramlarına odaklandı. Özellikle yenilikçilik meselesini özel sektörle devlet arasındaki işbirliklerini artırma üzerine odakladı ve yeni iş fikirlerinin geliştirilmesine çok odaklandı. Ee, bu yeni iş fikirleri ki paylaşımcı ekonomi işte Ortak herkesin bazı ürünleri bütün dünyada paylaşabildiği yeni iş biçimleri var. Bunların şirketlerinin örneklerini de verdi ve döndür, dönüştürülebilir geri dönüşümlü diyelim iş fikirlerinin çok önemli olduğunu dünyayı korumak için ve bütün hepinizi kendisiyle iletişim kurmak için bütün sosyal medya adreslerini paylaştı. Kendisine çok teşekkür ediyorum. Şimdi benim elimde iki tane soru var. Ee, bu e, soruları yönelteceğim birini Kalyani'ye, birini e, Ranika'ya. Sizde de başka sorular varsa yazabilirsiniz. Fakat son dört dakikamız zaten e, bitireceğiz hemen. Kalyani and Ranika, it is the last four minutes. Uh, there is one question to Talia Kalyani. They ask, what motivates you to work in this area and for this uh, organizations and project? What do you say? Uh, thank you so much for the question. It is actually a very rare people knows. I'm from management. I wonder I was sitting on a seashore and I was watched the seashore is completely untidy. And uh, I was thinking how to clean this. God, give me a chance, an opportunity. And a single person, I cannot do it. And I don't know anything about sustainable development. This was happened in 2012 after the tsunami came to my city. Uh, so that is the first tsunami. We were out of food, light, electricity, water for 15 to 10 days. We were just like in a jungle, uh, sitting at home. There is no connectivity with anybody. No mobile, no network. 2020? 20, 2000, 2012, October. Well, okay. Yes, mm -hmm. it's a, it, because I stay at the seashore area, Vishakapatnam. It's an Andhra Pradesh, south part of India. So that was the main, uh, uh, that the, that's the transformation thought uh, came into me. How to do this? How to stop the tsunami? So I was walking on the seashore, watching that. Then I thought, God, give me a solution how to do this. Then within two months, I have uh, got an opportunity in the same city in education sector because I'm from the management sector. I came from Qatar, uh, leaving my job and I want to settle back with my uh, family. Then uh, this opportunity came. I was thinking what to do in the education sector. I am from the management background. I don't know anything, but they were continuously asking me to join and you can do some wonders and um, activities. We have saw the profile and you can do a very good job in our school. Then I went to the school and immediately I was uh, pleased with the hospitality of the school, the policies, and I joined as an activity uh, coordinator. That's my first role in education sector. I don't know anything zero. From second onwards, 
till date i never turned back and i left the school in 2019 before 2019 i have what all i want to do it for this uh, nature for the environment i created and i i i projected through the hands of the children through the hands of the parents through the hands of the teachers so i was been enjoying my profession the present profession compared to the management because this is a new era every day i met new uh, uh, people and every day i come across the new challenges and i can create wonders uh, with the students because i chosen the this is the best and uh, uh, i can say the incredible channel where i can create wonders for this nature and and these are the main weapon uh, through the hands of the children we can uh, start working for the next few generations this is where the biggest transformation came into my life and uh, every day i feel that i have to do something more to this nature so nature will come back i think i shared you before my speech when you give something to the nature nature will give back to you so it will never going to be waste so that whatever i'm getting that back from the universe i'm happy with that and i started working uh, focusing developing myself my skills automatically my, my previous management supported me and i've gone through some uh, specific training programs certifications uh, and also i'm a blue consultant i train under blue consultant where exactly the blue means ocean so again plastic where and all plastic we can uh, omit it so those things are been trained and even i'm a solid waste uh, professional uh, uh, trained professional in that and many are there i forgot so many certifications so i always feel i'm a simple person something i wanted to do to the nature with the global collaborations and educators and the students so these are my world this is my family thank you so much i think i given the right answer yeah it's it's very very um, okay um, motivating and visioning uh, uh, experiences from your own life to us thank you very much uh, renika to you there is another kind of different question Uh, what do you think for the next two decades of the in the world what will happen to the nature to the earth do we for example we sh should we achieve, could we achieve the sustainable development goals or we will continue to discuss let's do something do something to achieve what do you think okay thank you very much dr ibrahim and i there is one question already posted to me uh individually direct message okay so i will read that question and also then i will answer your question because probably i will be able to answer the both questions in one go so okay. let me just read the question what do you think about the future problems about education in terms of students motivation and increasing the quality of education for our students Uh, and also about best way to increase the knowledge level of our students so again uh, of course the person has uh, mentioned i don't know the name I, i know the name but i don't exactly uh, let me say it is gokhan aldemir uh, okay. he has posed he or she i am not sure yeah. but uh, they have posted me this question and so of course uh, when i think they are mentioning our students i would say students in general all need motivation they all need the quality education and they also need to increase the education for future and what i think that of course the traditional education system is providing all the knowledge about what has happened in past or what is happening in current and what has uh, what is the i would say very basic facts from science chemistry biology or whatever the subject they are learning right so that is already there but what is missing is creativeness innovation that though these things are happening what are the challenges we are not able to create that enthusiasm or the uh, the question uh, the question they should raise the interest why this is happening and how i can change for better only if these type of questions are raised to them and uh, we can we are able to increase enough enthusiasm then i think it is possible 
And what we need to do for that, first of all, now I think we can take the advantage of this technology as we are connected today by having uh, like me being in UK, you being in Turkey, you being in uh, India, uh, Kalyani being in India, we are connected through this platform. Why not connect our classroom? Because we have already seen these examples from Kalyani's uh, projects that why not allow each and every class to connect with this global issue by, by sharing their experiences, by bringing expertise from the rest of the world and showing them. Also, when we are showing them just geography, we talk about population, we talk about the landslide, we talk about that, but we do not talk about how it will change, why it will change, and when what will change and how we can address this. These are the questions we need to keep on asking them. And, and this storytelling or uh, this enthusiasm can be through different ways, not only the books, through the activities. I think practical experience is very, very important and we should give them, even through the virtual, if it is not possible to go physically, virtually we can give these all these two uh, trips and tours and field trips and experiences now and we must be very very you know uh, futuristic we because we want these people to understand future and we don't want them to have these problems again we want them to shape their future now so that the future what they are going to encounter will be the way what they want and therefore we want them to be designers now. I said, it is you, the choices you make is your vote for the future. And therefore we need to prepare them for today to see their future. And always talk in that language, change the present tense to future tense. And that is what we need. I think we can take the help of all what is possible. And especially in the education system, what has happened that many lecturers, I don't say specific lecturers, many lecturers give these lectures which are old enough of 20 years old. They keep on doing the same thing because our system does not give them enough time for research, enough time for this all preparation and so on. So I think we need there also some more support system to the leaders and the teachers who can take their time off, be prepared for that, and deliver their education year. So I will stop there. Thank you very much. Okay, Renika, we thank you and Kalyani, you too. Uh, it was a very beneficial session for me. I learned a lot. I saw what's happening all over the world. Actually, as an academic, I have given uh, two terms the sustainable development in education courses in my university. So I gave my students the task to find what kind of projects all over the world done and what they achieved and how can you can find another innovation innovation innovative way to continue this to uh, um, connect with these actions thank you very much i cannot translate uh, what you said about your motivation and about your um, ideas for students uh, dr ranika but uh, hope the students and the teachers will share with each other uh, with the no know the knowers will share their ideas with others uh, thank you very much it's 27 minutes late but it's uh, okay, no problem. Thank you very much, inshallah, see you in person and uh, hope to benefit from your actions and works uh, as a person in this world, as a simple person. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank, thank, thank you so much. Bye -bye. Thank you, Renika, for encouraging me. And thanks for your lot of uh, insights and very vast knowledge you have. I uh, appreciate, uh, definitely we will connect and work together. And also I thank Dr. Ibrahim for connecting me to all of you. And uh, I'm happy that actually I shared a lot of information, still a lot of stuff is there. In future, maybe I'll share the, you know, another platform for you all. Thank you so much. Uh, and thank you for all the organizers for inviting me here. Thanks thank a lot. You. Bye -bye. More last words? Okay, thank you very much. Have a good day. See you. Nice to meet you guys.